before coming to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, I worked for the National Science Foundation in the Arctic Sciences end of the National Science Foundation. And so I always found some excuse to go up to the Arctic and see what the investigators were doing. And that got me to just some fascinating places. One time in particular flew north several hundred miles toward the North Pole. And uh, this program that I ran had funded a multi-institutional international program up in the Arctic where we froze an icebreaker into the floating ice pack for a full year. And it served as a research platform. And so every six weeks, we would fly a new group of scientists and some fresh cabbage up to the ship. And uh, they set up a research camp all around the ship, measured everything you can imagine. And the goal of the program was to find out why ice melts. Now, that sounds a little silly. <laughs> and it wasn't just the ice in your iced tea. It was the Arctic Ocean ice cap had been melting for several years and didn't look like it was going to stop and since then has, has not stopped, still is melting. And they were trying to find out all of the different ocean, atmosphere, ice conditions that were causing it to melt at the rate that it was. So we had several different aircraft flying missions over the ship. Uh, the CIA uh, flew one of their spy satellites over and took pictures for us and let us have some sort of dumbed down versions of the imagery. Uh, declassified imagery. We had a, a Navy uh, submarine on training duty that went underneath the, the place and we had snowmobiles galore. On that same uh, research station which we call Sheba for surface heat budget of the Arctic, um, they had to have polar bear watch. So there were people on the bridge of the ship that was of course frozen into the ice that had binoculars and anytime scientists were out on the ice a, they had to carry a weapon with them, which is a real a situation you don't like to think of, a scientist with a weapon, <laughs> not the safest bunch with a weapon. Uh, and just to prove that, one of the scientists decided to see if the chamber was empty. And so instead of breaking open the weapon and looking inside to see if there's a bullet in the little hole, he pulled the trigger. Well, he found out there was still a round in the chamber. And it went right into the cable box of one of the other scientists. And of course, there's no hardware store anywhere to go buy new cable after your cable is severed with a bullet. But they let the other scientists in his group carry the weapon from then on. But the group at the, on the bridge called out to one of the little huts because they had set up some huts because it's darn cold out there. So they'd build a hut and uh, they had instruments that go down through the ice and atmospheric towers that would go up. And anyway, the, some of the, one of those groups was in their little hut. They called out and said, uh, don't leave your hut. <laughs> and oh, by the way, don't leave your weapon <laughs> too far away either. There's a polar bear wandering around. And of course, you've got a white bear on white ice. And so they can they don't even try to sneak. I mean, they're going to be sneaky whether they like it or not. And this polar bear had gotten pretty far into the camp before anybody actually spotted it wandering around. And fortunately, it wasn't interested in what was going on in the hut, so it didn't try to break in. Instead, it was interested in the garbage pile. And it had smelled, I guess there's food and everything else in there. And so it had felt, it thought it smelled dinner, I guess. And it, had, it was wandering over there. And one of the funny things is that the ship had a regular gangplank, like any ship would have, so you could get on and off, right? So at night, they would raise the gangplank, because nobody's leaving at night. And one morning they came by, and there were polar bear footprints. Mom and two cubs had come by, <laughs> sniffing around at the ship. And so the idea was that, well, if you know, we'd have left the gangplank down, the polar bear might have climbed the gangplank and had us for breakfast. So anyway, there are all kinds of stories about the camp there. One time they uh, didn't get a fresh supply of equipment, and they ran out of the uh, weather balloons for carrying the, the weather instruments up into the sky, the Ray, Ray Winsons. So they went down to the biology lab when the biologist wasn't there, and they stole all of their latex rubber gloves and filled up the latex rubber gloves with, with helium and tied them all together. And they've got pictures of this Raywin Sam being lifted up into the air with 100 or 150 latex gloves all you know, looking like a big giant hand, each one of them. Um, and they had all kinds of improvising to do, including toward the end where the drifting ice pack took the ship farther north than they had ever expected it would go. And so the planes couldn't get there. Then we had to scramble around and got the U.S. Coast Guard to use their icebreakers to carry in new supplies, and they helicoptered over supplies from one icebreaker to the other, um, and then turned around and took the 
had a crew change, and, and then it was it was just a logistics nightmare. One day I got a call from the logistics people who were at the University of Washington, and they had heard from the ship, and uh, there was a, a polar bear who just kept coming back, kept coming back frequently. It too was trying to get into the garbage dump, I guess. And they said, um, what do we have to do if we wind up shooting the polar bear? And I said, well, it's a threatened species. You'll be filling out paperwork the rest of your life. They said, oh, maybe we won't do that. And then the guy said, well, now, we've got some logistics people up there at the ship who are Inuit. And they're allowed to shoot polar bears. It's part of their culture. What if we have the Inuit shoot the polar bear? And I said, it's still, uh, it's still a US cruise. You know, it's a US program. You'll be filling out paperwork the rest of your life. They said, well, maybe it'll go away. So they took several snowmobiles out and tried to chase the polar bear off. It was real unimpressed. <laughs> I mean, really, truly unimpressed. So then they decided to shoot flares, flare guns at it. So they shot some flare guns in the direction of the polar bear. And it kind of went, <laughs> what do I care about that? I don't know what that is. I'm not scared. Eventually it wandered off for lack of interest, not because they chased it off. But we were lucky the polar bears didn't didn't do any any harm, uh, even though they were around. To me, a kid from Memphis who never thought he'd get further than Arkansas from from Memphis, probably uh, to have gone to these places is just still seems a little incredible to me.